Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back this morning to the garage where you join me for a bit of a Topaz swap. I'm going to be driving over in the Senna to get it started with its detailing and paint protection film and then when I'm there at Topaz it's time to pick up the Ford GT which is now complete and take it out for its first drive going over about 30 or 40 miles per hour. So we're also going to take over the LT Spider 2 so for the first time driving both McLarens out on the road together we'll get the GT, take it out of town to go to my Aston Martin dealership to pick up the GT8 which is just had its second year service. So today I'm going to be joined by Benzine Ben to help move around all of the cars, driving the Senna and the GT back to back again for the first time. So let's get things started. It should be an exciting day ahead. Shock horror. What kind of douchebag parks across two bays? How could I possibly do that with the Senna? Well, as you guys probably know, normally the GT8 would live there, the Ford GT would live there, but after Autosport, when I brought the car back to London, I kind of just felt like dumping it right in the middle because after all, they're my spaces, why not? So it is pretty cool to have these two cars together. The first time I've ever simultaneously owned two McLarens, even though I've had a few uh, in my car ownership experiences to date, we're gonna be taking in the LT Spider also to Topaz though, because this car, well, it's now about two and a half years old. It's done around 12,000 miles in total. And there are a few things to talk about with regards to the paint protection film, but also just show you how it's holding up and how it looks now. And that is of course what we're going to be then doing to the Senna. So I'm gonna leave this car in the trustworthy hands of the guys at Topaz to get the detailing finished. Some of you will notice that I have been driving it at Autosport prior to the installation of paint protection film. And I'll talk more about that a little later on as well. Then we'll get there and we'll take the Ford GT out for its first proper drive. Now I say proper drive because I took it around the Goodwood Motor Circuit. I've also pretty gently driven it around London, but I've not taken it out because I didn't want to risk getting any damage. So to join me in the car, we have Benzine Ben back. How you hey doing? Hey guys, very good, thank you. All well? Everything's starting off well this year? Yeah, just about. Been hibernating over Christmas. Hey, why not make the most of a time to rest? And then later on, when we get to the Aston dealer in the GT, mm -hmm. you're going to drive the noisy one. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. The noisy beast, the GT8. So we've got a few different convoys and random bits mm -hmm. and pieces, yep. but if you're happy to take the LT Spider, We'll, think get so. today, we'll get today rolling then. Let's do it. I'm gonna get the LT Spider off its tire cushions. If you double press the unlock button, the driver's door pops open. We can also open up the bonnet. So here we've got the trickle charger. Now the last time I drove this car was actually down to the MTC on the present unwrapping day of the Senna. So it's been a couple of weeks or so now. It's sitting on the tire cushions, which normally if you're leaving a car parked for months, I didn't really have any plans of when I was gonna drive it next. It just stops the tires from getting flat spots. But if I squeeze around through here, just move the trickle charger out of the way and we'll take a seat inside and get the LT Spider started up. Do you want to head to the back? Get a noise of the startup. Hopefully everything fires straight into life. We will find out in one second. I tell you what, this car does still sound good two and a half years on. So we'll let it warm up, then we'll put it forward, swap around, and I'll hop into the center. The LT is bubbling away in the background. The center, I think, actually might be quieter than the LT, but I didn't plug the trickle charger in because it's only been a few days and it had a good outing at Autosport. But again, key on here, by the way, you don't have a bonnet button because there's no bonnet to open. You can just turn on the lights. But a double press and it pops the door. And then, interestingly, these doors are quite a bit heavier just because of the sheer size and the way they're hinged from the roof. But I've got the hang of sliding straight in now. Just like that. That's a bit antisocial if I pull the door down. So, start button up on the roof. There we go. Right, let's take these two over then. I am immediately being reminded what a spaceship this thing is. He says, as a phantom drophead coupe from Qatar goes by, white with a blue roof. Awesome, that looks really cool actually. Um, not too many of those around. Anyway, back to the Senna. The only previous time that I've driven this car in daylight was picking it up from McLaren Manchester because at Autosport, it was basically like driving around at night. It was in the dark inside the arena. But the thing that you notice is the road markings flying by through the glass door, the glass windows on the doors. And the noise of the car, it's really loud. No, no second questions about that. It's a very, very noisy place to be, but it feels dramatic and exciting and a sense of occasion, even just going along at 30 odd miles per hour in traffic. I'm taking it very gently because 
so I don't want to risk obviously getting any stone chips. So even the truck's flying by me, although I've got traffic right up ahead. And then the view in my rear, uh, rear view of the 675 LT, because normally when we're out with multiple of the cars, I'd be driving in the LT as the, I guess, previous flagship of the collection. And now I get more of an opportunity to see what it's like on the road as well. And even though it's two and a half years old, it still looks absolutely fantastic. So, so far, this is quite exciting. And we've not got to the GT, which is going to be much more of a run out when we actually get there. It's only around 15 minutes or so out of town towards Topaz. So a very short little drive. Uh, we'll head this way and then uh, get on to the next steps of the day. I kid you not, I don't think that I have ever driven a car where you hear the noises of the stones hitting the bodywork more than you do in the McLaren Senna. There's not much sound deadening and there's a lot of aero, so all the stones are just pinging up. Thank goodness it already has PPF in the vulnerable areas, but it is moderately terrifying to drive until it's fully protected. I'm definitely keeping my distances from the cars in front. Um, let's hope it stays all okay, but we'll have a good inspection at Topaz. In any case though, I'm just enjoying driving this. I don't mind too much, it's worth it. This is really cool. Rolling with benzene on my right, with the two max. <laughs> I feel like he was dodging a bump there. Got to squeeze back ahead. This is unreal. That's so cool. Back at Topaz then and back with Nabil. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm very good. It was an awesome weekend at Autosport. Yeah, but I saw, yeah. It looked like it was a lot of fun. It was. There's yeah. one little problem. Yeah, the car's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but you guys are the kings. That's why we're here. So yeah. what do you think about it? I mean, the color is phenomenal. The car is absolutely stunning. Um, it's just filthy. That's the it only really problem is, I really can is. see. You come in close and we've just done a little walk around to talk a bit about this. And the fingerprints that you might see are not from me, I will hasten to add. But you can see just how much it's picked up, even in the halls uh, at Autosport, particularly down here. It's amazing, isn't it? And you were saying around the back as well, look at this. Um, that, that's, the bit that, uh, that's the bit that actually I'm, I'm surprised at the most, how much build up there is over there of debris and obviously- uh, The rubber and rubber just whatever's stuff. going on. It's phenomenal. I'm actually looking forward to getting that cleaned <laughs> up. Getting it cleaned properly, because the worst <laughs> thing you could possibly do is to wipe your finger over this and then scratch the car yeah. when it's already slightly dirty. It's the worst thing you can do because any 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 particulars that are on the actual clear coat are going to just damage it. Yeah. If you rub it in, you've got to make sure that you jet it off, snow firm it and then jet it off again to safely remove it. Yeah. So we will talk a lot more about this because it is a desperately complex car. Yeah. You were saying, how many pieces is it for the 225 kit? 225 pieces roughly. Uh, and you know, I'm OCE about, yeah. about, about not getting as many pieces on the car, less mm -hmm. seams and that kind of stuff. This has 225 odd circa. Yeah. It's the most complicated car that we do. Okay, so we will come back and cover more of that process with the Senna to come. For the moment though, we've also just been taking a look at the LT Spider. Yeah, this is really interesting actually. I'm really happy you brought this over this time because this is, and how long has it been? It's been two and a half years. The car's done about 12,000 miles since we did the full PPF here at Topaz in summer 2016. But in that time, don't forget, this car's been around racetracks. It's been around Spa, the Nordschleife, the Nürburgring GP. It's been on road trips to Bosnia, to Montenegro. It's been used properly. It's done and supercar that's rallies. Beautiful thing And about something it. we're gonna yeah. get onto as well. It's yeah. also done extended 200 mile per hour runs down the German autobahns. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> which, it, which it, explains something it, in the back. It, it's interesting as a bit of a, an update, because. Even I look at the quality, for example, and you see the almost perfect reflections of the paintwork. It looks like it was yeah. detailed yesterday. I know, I know. And that's what I'm, I'm glad to see, to be honest. The gloss factor is phenomenal. Still really, really shiny. The depth of color that we detailed, all the detailing work that we did underneath in paint correction, mm. looks really, really good from underneath as well. Uh, so I'm actually very happy. And I'm also very happy the fact that, well, not happy that there's marks on the car, but I'm happy yeah. that it hasn't cost you a full respray. Yes, <laughs> yes. So let's talk about this. Yeah. Um, there are a few stone chips, as you'd expect. Yeah, stone chips here. There's some road rash that's over there. Road rash are where small, tiny stones mm. hit the actual surface. Uh, but indentations. There's... And then obviously there's a little tiny little mark here as well, which obviously something's hit the film as impact. Yeah, the so the interesting thing about that is this is obviously a, a little mark in the film. I'm not quite sure how easy that is to see on the camera, but if you imagine that straight to the paint without film on it, that could potentially be a front end respray just definitely. to fix that issue. Yeah, definitely. Uh, most of it's all held up really, really well. There was one other small incident. Uh, somebody uh, in another car actually opened their door and it hit the side vent here. And the protection film here has taken pretty much all of that impact. It has, and, and the good thing is, is that even if there is a small de a defect or any imperfection underneath in the carbon, that can be easily rectified mm -hmm. and the film can go straight back on there again. Yeah. 
which will uh, save the day, as opposed to a cracked piece of carbon fibre, which wouldn't be cheap at all. Now, let's talk about this back piece that I'm yeah, intrigued my fault. about. <laughs> so, this car, 3.8 litre, twin turbocharged V8, it runs incredibly hot, and if, like me, you take your car down the autobahns and drive it really fast yeah. um, in the really, summer, in 30 degrees. Really fast. <laughs> yeah, really, really fast. Unfortunately, yeah. the film has basically burnt, hasn't it? I think so, yeah. I think it's just the surface. I mean, when, when we first did this car, it was a sort of a, a, a call whether they would put film on this mm -hmm. back section or not. We obviously knew that it would be, become very, very hot, but we didn't know how hot it would become. Yeah. So it's a part of the research and development part of things. So once we put this on, obviously now it's actually got very hot and it's actually burnt the, the clear coat on the film. We'll just take that off, replace it, or yeah. just leave it off. It depends whatever your preference is, really. Yeah, I think we should probably replace it for the time being. Best Definitely. to keep the car protected, especially given how, how I use them and take them out and about. But there is Definitely. also, I was going to say right now, one other thing that we're actually here for today. Exactly, and I'm really looking forward for you to see it. Can we go inside? Let's go inside. Let's, Let's go check out the Ford GT. You ready? Let's check this out. <laughs> yes. Wow, this looks incredible. <laughs> Honestly, it's phenomenal, isn't it? It, it? Do you know what? I still can't quite believe it, and it, I've only not seen it for around a week or so since we were here to see the results of the detailing. The, the thing is, I mean, you saw this car when it didn't have any paint protection film on it, and when it was going through the whole stage of paint correction. Mm -hmm. Now you've seen it with paint protection film, can you tell the difference? No, that's, that's the, the biggest thing, isn't it? There's no visible edges. So just to, to confirm, every single painted panel has protection film on it. It does. Every single panel has paint protection film on it. The carbon has paint protection film mm -hmm. on it, but the satin version of the film, yep. not the gloss, just to keep obviously with the way that the, the, the satin uh, the film looks. Down um, here? Uh, that's also been done all the way through, uh, all the way underneath All of the diffuser well. fins? It has been, yeah, because I know that you're going to be wow. driving this car in the most random road. So <laughs> I thought those are not the easiest shape at all. And also, I remember just in here, we had, um, you could see the visible line of a bit of protection film it had. Yep, that's, um, all, so that's all gone. Yep, exactly. That's this awesome. is one of my absolute favorite views of the Ford GT, the way you see under the flying buttress. So all of this as well, obviously. The whole thing, I mean, when we first saw this car, uh, we thought it was going to be a relatively simple design. But once you actually start installing the film on it, 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 it has its own challenges. This being so you, uh, literally a 90 degree angle, right? So it's very difficult to put film mm -hmm. on it and for it to look good. It's very easy to put film on and leave it on. Yeah. It's the whole point of how we do things. We put the film on with the, with the view of making it look fantastic as well. Yeah, you know? and that it does. And elephant in the room, of course, the fact that you have two Ford GTs side by side yeah, out exactly. of a very small number that are even here in the country at all. Yeah, so we talked also about a few areas being doubled up. Yep, exactly. Um, I think yep. underside of the door was one of those. I'll show, I'll show you now. So Let's pull this up. These areas which are really the high impact areas. Yeah. We want to make sure that they're fully protected because mm -hmm. we've seen some cars that have had a single sheet of film on there and it's still penetrated through. That's, yeah. how, that's how it depends on the road you're going to go on. But yeah. we decided to put double it up all the way through here just to make sure that the, the carbon, which is very precious and it's very hard, it can't be repaired, especially that it's a satin it's integral finish. part of the door as well. Yeah, so you want to make sure it's absolutely protected. Same thing here with the top, uh, the top section mm -hmm. of, of the door. Yeah, uh, due to all the stones door. that will inevitably be fired out from the tires it's back through there. It's going to come through from here all the way, all the way around all these areas. So, yeah. uh, and also the leading edge. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to do as well. So, Okay, and some of the parts of the inside we talked about and the number plate plinth. I'll show you the new plinth in a second. So yeah. this part, I remember in the footwell. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can tell that's got the film on it. So that, um, obviously, because passengers' feet will bang against that, so we want to protect it. Especially when you're flooring it. And we also, <laughs> yes, we also talked with Mazin about doing the centre here because when you put your seatbelt buckle in, yeah. you could easily catch that carbon. So this uh, exactly. is, yeah, that's filmed you as well. Tell us about that, yeah. It's important to get that done. Small touches like that, but make a big difference. Definitely, so that will, uh, keep that looking good. So let's have a look at the. I want to see what you think of the license plate. Yeah. So around here, well, from this angle, it's basically invisible. Um, come down. Yes. Yeah, so here's the new custom-made number plate plinth. How much better is That's that? That's much better because the old one just sat here over the nose. It dominated, and you lost this leading edge. Yeah. Which would make stri sense, did it? it just no. Like... Amazing. I might have to take it off. It's quick release. See, there are some brackets on the back that you can unscrew. Yeah. But just the colors look so good under these lighting under, under your spotlights here yeah the reflections off everything so everything even this all the way through here that's been done the eight pillars obviously okay we've also wrapped around the edges to make sure yeah. that any potential areas where a chip can 
can penetrate, we make sure that we actually recover it up. Okay. Leading edges, things like this here, yeah. again, very important. There's no like visible line. Normally you'd have like a line across here or something. It's literally one piece. It goes from the bottom all the way up to the back, all the way across up to here. Well, it looks, it looks absolutely immaculate. And by the way, another setter just here. Yeah. But it's probably time for the showroom shuffle yeah. to uh, move everything outside. Let's get these cars outside. I want to see what this looks like in the sun. Hopefully the sun is still shining. So. Let's okay. do it. The good sound of that V6. As we said, it's actually really quite loud. Now, of course, the wing is up at the moment. When you start driving, that can go back down. Out it comes, which means we very briefly here have three of the cars together. Of course, the GT still needs its front number plates installed. The GT plus Senna, the swap over is happening right now. We're just gonna move it out of the way to let all the other cars out before pulling it back to take a better look at everything in a second. And out comes GT number two. Much more classical, traditional spec. Silver GT departing, but right now parked side by side. Another quick thing to show you, new squad stickers, you guys, you can find these in the Shmi 150 shop. So the link is in the description down below. We've got them in a number of different colors, but the red and gold just posed here for some photos at the moment beneath the exhaust tailpipes. But how cool is this? Two Ford GTs out of a handful or two of the cars here in the UK in total. I just now need to get my front number plate on. But don't forget, link for those down below. How cool is that? The two together, love it. Benzene has just worked his way into the passenger seat. I'm gonna climb in in one second. But here are the other stickers that I was talking about. We've got the squad sticker there to go with the LT. And I think there's one lurking somewhere on the center. Yeah, here we go. On the end plate, of course, it looks tiny on there. Uh, but let's hop into the GT now. I'll pass Ben the camera because it's got cold. And as you can see, it is also lightly drizzling. Not ideal conditions. Hi, Ben. Hey. Um, <laughs> as I was saying, not ideal conditions for actually taking this car out. But nonetheless, let's go do it. And it looks like I need to put some fuel in the car as well from all my little pootles around town before it was ready to go. But this is going to be kind of first drive, so we wait, pedal box, adjust, there we go. Gotta get used to all of this again. Oh, it feels like, I don't know, it feels brand new. It basically is. It's for GT drive time, even in inclement weather conditions. Remember how it all works. Carefully does this, knowing that I am reversing. <laughs> Look at that, the rear view camera towards the Senna and the 675 LT. The last thing in the world we would want would be to get that wrong. So let's head out this way. Oh goodness, left hand drive in the UK is so strange. This takes some getting used to. Remember to drive on the left, but off we go. Driving the car, not worrying for the first time about it getting stone chipped because it has the full paint protection film. Of course, I've still got to run it in, which means I can't necessarily rag the car and drive it hard yet. We will get to that in the future. Right, lift system button, that is there. The frog goes up instantly. Oh, look what's coming towards us. 488, very nice, very, very, very nice. So, yeah, just take this slow and steady, but we're heading out of town now because the next stop on today's agenda is to pick up the GT8 and then drive with the GT8 and the GT back to the garage. Finally, we're going to find ourselves able to just accelerate a tiny little bit, nothing crazy. You get a good amount of sound going on in here. One thing that's really odd though is that the speedo overreads a fair notch and obviously we've got the noise in the background uh, that I've mentioned in a previous video. That's going to be fixed in the very near future. But to be honest, the car is in really good condition and shape considering it's, well, made in very much a boutique way by Multimatic. But the sun is going down. It's not raining at the moment. Just getting a gentle feel for it, reminding myself how to drive it, being left-hand drive, looking at the mirrors, which are just really, really far out. In fact, if you look at your mirror, you can see straight through the flying buttress. How ridiculously cool is that? Um, we've gone from one spaceship to another today. And uh, yeah, just get a feel for what it's like. 
Now, down here in the center, if I press in the middle, you have the manual button. There's a very good phone holder down there as well for the nav that's currently set. So we are now manual on the paddles. Are we gonna have a clearer run? Yes, we do, so. You can only use around 4,000 revs or so. Let's start to get a little sense of what it's about. I'm definitely, I'm definitely concentrating. I'm keeping my wits about me in here because, well, it's an incredibly valuable car and I'm quite alien to it and it's my first experience. But we've got about, I think around 45 minutes or so to get to my Aston dealer in total to go pop in and pick up the GT8 as well. But hopefully we'll find some countryside on the way there. This is just baby steps. That early introduction to what it's going to be like. We're very near the dealer now. Fortunately, it's not quite dark yet. We've got to get a bit more used to how the indicators and things work in here. But we're getting there. All those noises in the background, that's why you want PPF so that nothing's getting damaged while you're driving. Even a small little tunnel. Not that it's going to make any difference because it's not that loud. Oh, maybe that was a little bit naughty. A few more revs than I should have used. But we're about to pull in where I think the GTA should be waiting. I don't think the GTA's really been on the channel all that much recently. Um, so it's nice to be back here with that. I can see one very blue and orange Aston Martin Vantage GT8. So let's use the lift system here. Let's pull this, actually for the minute, let's park it at the front door and then go and say hello. We've done all the paperwork, and as you can see, it is quickly getting dark. But um, Ben, could you give us a nice noisy start-up? It would be my pleasure. And then get the uh, hot air running as well, because it's rather chilly, so um, ready when you are. That's what we like. Now don't forget that it's got the valve control switch in, okay. the, uh, in the ashtray, in the armrest. Yeah, have that open. So, it's safe to say that the GT8 is going to deafen the GT while we're driving back. Difference in volumes. I'll go jump in, give me a moment, then we'll head home, we'll drive back with both cars together. But it's actually quite cool because they're both WEC cars, they're both the road going versions of World Endurance Championship cars. In fact, Le Mans winners, the Ford GT won Le Mans in 2016, the GTA Vantage version won Le Mans in 2017. Um, so, yes, it's very nice to have those together. Of course, some other rather cool cars around as well, and in the showroom, New Vantage and a black DBS on the left as well. So let me jump in here. Left hand drive naturally for this one. I do love getting in here. Just the drama of opening the doors and the width of the sill, the size and scale of the car. Take a step inside and equally fire this into action as well. Here we go. Vehicle is on. I think it just tells me that because the door is open and I don't have my belt on. Here we go. Fortunately, on the way back into London, we have ourselves a little bit of a tunnel. So I'm going to pull over just to the side and lower our window ever slightly, and hopefully, Benzine's going to know what to do. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's on the wrong side. Wow. That sound is nuts. This car is basically completely inaudible in comparison to the GT8. Fast forward a bit, where Ben had to dash home, I had to deal with a couple of emails and urgent things, but we're back where we started off earlier this morning now, with the GT and the GT8, instead of the Senna and the 675 LT. Very much a car swap going on here in the garage. So I'm just gonna cover up the GT8, tuck it away, back into bed for the time being. I might need to do this when the camera isn't rolling. And um, one thing to always think about, by the way, when you are covering up a car, is that if it is hot, you don't want necessarily to risk the cover touching at the exhaust tips, which fortunately the way they are placed on the back of this doesn't actually happen, but equally you want to let the engine cool a little bit before you do fully uh, close it away because otherwise, well, small little thing to think about with the heat, right? Um, so that's actually more or less done. I'm going to take the GT out again now just to drive it a little bit more myself, but I do have to say the way the guys have helped me make this number plate, massive shout out because 
well, look at how it's placed now. It's fitting perfectly with the carbon fiber you have around the front. It lets us see this angular edge with the gold stripes and it doesn't obstruct too much and can be removed if required. I'm very, very pleased with that versus the standard one that was in there uh, or on the front of the car before. And it's quite important to me to keep it legal and to still have the number plate on display um, right there. So I think that's been, well, errand day at its finest. A massive thanks as always to Topaz, to Nabil, and also to Mazin for getting the work done on this car with their team. Yeah, it's just the early beginning start. You can probably tell I'm completely wiped out. You can find more details as well about the new squad stickers down in the description below. I'm gonna leave it there for now. So thank you very much for watching guys and I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.